Friday everyone. I hope you're all doing well. It's the end of the week. It's nearly the end of, of the work day for me today. So I'm looking forward to just relaxing um, Yeah, with, with a few friends, which will be really nice. And I hope you've all had a very good day. And for those of you who are still, it's not Friday yet. It's still Thursday night for you. Uh, I hope you do have a good Friday as well. Today we're going to look at when does the narcissist start cheating on you? So we know that narcissists, uh, you know, this cheating thing, it's almost like there's, you know, there's always undercurrent things going on. Now, uh, whether we want to call, you know, cheating as, it, you know, it needs to be sexual in nature, whether cheating is when they actually have a significant significant other cheating could also be that they don't actually engage physically with another person but they're still talking to other people it can be when they don't uh, tell you financial things it can be when there's hidden things but it's still cheating because in a relationship we want transparency and that transparency is very important because that's what makes us feel safe and secure and if we don't feel safe and secure then we're not going to go on to experience love now love is a word that is also mistaken in many ways because love is not so much a feeling it is a state of being that means that it is experienced in its totality in our body so it's a state of being we feel love we are love we give love love is comprised though of certain qualities there are certain things that need to occur for this thing called love to actually be taking place the first thing is we need to feel safe. The second thing is we need to feel secure. Then we need to trust, then we experience love. Then we feel this joy, this happiness, this growth. But there are foundational building blocks to experience love, to have this state of being of love, and then go on to have all these great feelings that are associated with it. And this is where we can make mistakes because we get caught up in the frenzy and we know that with narcissists, love bombing is important. It has to happen quick and fast and everything else. And it's a conquest for many of them. So how soon do they cheat? What would you consider cheating? What would a narcissist consider cheating? Even if a person's not a narcissist, they may believe that it's still okay to talk to other women. You see, many narcissists always leave the door ajar with exes. There's always, it's just a little bit open if they can. But then, then they come across some empaths that just shut it never to be opened ever ever again and it can actually shock them yeah but with a narcissist cheating sadly they actually it happens very fast i know someone who uh who got married and her husband was turning up at his ex's place two weeks later yep you know, hoovering, doing this, doing that. In fact, he'd never even let that ex go. Now, that's one ex that she found out about. Imagine how many other exes they are, there are. Narcissists, sadly, for empaths, when they find out the truth of what's really been going on, they realise that there was cheating really from day one. They may quiet the field for a while, right but don't forget usually you know you'll start dating it's not like you're actually there with them all the time they do things you know they're messaging people they've got lots of people who are interested um in them you'll see them with lots of friends they don't really know these friends in depth though right so the narcissist cheating really has begun the day you meet them. The day you meet the narcissist, it's on. 
small things sure small things in small ways sure when you look back on your experience with a narcissist you can actually realize when you started getting those feelings that they were pulling away that there was something wrong usually it's very very early on in fact it can be as early as two to three months once they've secured you it's interesting you know that um object permanence that's what they are like um, they lack so it's it, it's like out of sight out of mind and i'm meaning literally literally so it's that attention that affection all that rush that sort of adrenaline spin in the moment so when you're not there they're not thinking of you now of course they know you know that there's an a, there is an attachment there they know that you're their significant other but what they do in that very moment they create chaos if they're out and about and if it's a you know lots of friends lots of gatherings you know lots of people coming together they just do not even think of the ex away they go partying uh you know catching up with others doing whatever they want liaising with the other, with others sexually as well and then they might see someone they haven't seen for a while and guess what they're going to make a good significant other now it's usually often the empath catches on that something is wrong and this is often the only reason why many stop or many move away they're too embarrassed to actually have to face up to what's just happened and they will just leave but it's when they are confronted if they were left many of them to their own devices right and many covert narcissists uh, get away with a lot of this they're married and everything else and their partners have no idea what's going on they would just continue it but it's when if the empath's the one who says something is wrong that's when it's going to come to a stop because if we were to leave it to the narcissist and sadly and i'm not judging anyone here for this because it's a tough gig to have to go through you know you just keep putting up with things and you know you'll hear the excuse and then you'll hear something else and something else and because it's not there staring in your face right you might not actually have photos of them cheating you might not actually have evidence you just keep tolerating it and putting up with it but really we need to get to a stage where we are spreading the word so we can grow in consciousness love must feel safe secure then we trust now we experience love so without those three things there you're not going to experience love now sadly what happens with empaths is that they start to think oh is it me do i have trust issues and this is the sad thing as well is that many empaths are left feeling i've got trust issues i need to trust more i need to listen more i need to give them a bit more freedom um really just look at the behaviors now i hope that today has helped it's a it, it is tough it's tough when you have to go back to actually have to see the truth of it but if you don't see the truth of it you will stay stuck you will stay stuck thinking that the narcissist can change that the narcissist this the narcissist that we have to get to the stage where we don't care about the narcissist anymore you have to care about your life and putting yourself forward yes narcissists well maybe they will change one day when they're not the ones leading the way maybe it needs to be other you know good strong people that lead the way and actually say no it's not okay it's not okay to cheat it's not okay to dupe people it's not okay to terrorize people it's not okay all right everyone have an amazing weekend and um i'm going to talk to you all again very soon and i hope today's helped take lots of care and bye for now